So what is your recommendation? I, I think you came across this many times. I personally did as well. So you have leaders that actually are very much rationally willing to go in that direction. Actually, I would say, honestly, most of them are sincerely willing to go in a place of engagement of people yeah. where they, they're attached and, and connected to a purpose and so on and so on. But despite the words, not only because of them, but also because of the context in which they live, which is very much, you know, short-term results, uh, uh, reaching performance quickly and so on and so on. They operate at a level which is absolutely not of a values level, yeah. but it's more of a performance profitability. So what would be your advice? Because otherwise it's, you know, it's, it's a well, dog in its own tail. These two things are not incompatible, but they seem to be. So yeah, okay. So we have to think about the short-term results, but we also have to think about the long-term future. Um, and uh, so if you can create a culture where people are al allowed to innovate, where they we are creative, if you create a caring culture, it doesn't mean to say you can't get the short-term results. <laughs> I mean, the problem arises when the leader is so fear-driven about the short-term results that it forgets these other values, which are um, inclusive values. So it gets so stressed out and fearful about getting this objective done and that goal done that they forget about these other things. And, and, the, and so they, yeah, so they struggle and everybody struggles. But they, these two things are not incompatible at all. You know, you just need to get fear out of your life. As leaders, that's what I say. To you. If you're in fear, you're not going to be a good leader. So easy to say, uh, difficult to do. So oh, absolutely. what would be your recommendation, not only to managers, but also to those people like us that do the work of supporting managers in, in doing these Yeah, and it's, you see, we talk about leadership as if it's something kind of like difficult and special. But really, actually, what we're talking about is psychological development. That's what we're talking about. We're not talking about leadership. We're talking about helping people individuate, self-actualize, uh, understand their vision, uh, create a culture where people can grow and develop. Um, and so you have to learn to lead yourself and anyway, overcome your fears so that you can be a role model for the people in your organization. So leadership development begins with leading self. And we said, it's really a psychological thing. It's not a, a leadership thing. I mean, I think we get very confused with this word leadership. It means a hundred different things. When I wrote my book on the new leadership paradigm over 10 years ago, I, I, I got the message, if you like, from my soul. I had to write a book on leadership. And I thought, no, I don't want to do that. And I, I looked up on Amazon and there were like 3,000 books with leadership in there. Nice. And I thought, yeah, there you go. And then I got this idea, well, what about leadership, consciousness, values? And I, so I added all of those words together and I searched and I only found eight books that covered that range. And I thought, okay, maybe I should write a, a book on leadership. So I wrote The New Leadership Paradigm. Some people think it's the best book I've ever written. Some people say it's the best book they've ever read. I mean, I have a friend in, in Serbia who said, this is undoubtedly the best business book I've ever read. And it talks about leading self, leading a team, leading an organization, and leading in society. And it tackles all of these deep issues about um, what it means to lead self. Um, so if your leadership program doesn't deal with values, if it doesn't deal with what I call ego soul dynamics, it's not really a leadership program. It's just a, it's a box ticker saying we've done leadership, that, let's move on. I would say and argue that like most organizations that I know, if not all have exposed values and somehow they are really willing to push their values. But often the result is just, you know, um, like, you know, you're telling me you have to do, you have to behave this way, but it doesn't work. So what, what's okay. the, what's so the it's okay having a values of an organization, but you have to translate the values into behaviors and you need to ask the people. 
So I'll give you an example of a hospital we worked in many years ago in uh, Houston. Uh, so they had uh, five values um, and they said, okay, these are the values we want to use throughout the whole hospital. Now, in your department, it could be um, oncology, oncology, it could be... Um, it could be sales, it could be, um, no, not sales, it could be patient care, it could be nursing, it could be anything. In your department, what are the behaviors that align with these five values? So every department knew what behaviors were they were looking for in order to align with the overall company values. Who should define those behaviors? The people. The representative part of the whole no, 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 no. Oh, the values, the values. Well, uh, you know, having doing a values assessment is fundamentally important, but the leaders should also be involved. But having hearing from the employees should also be important because you want to be able to align the values up to a certain point with the key values of the people, like honesty, uh, respect, recognition. Those need to be part of the values, but then you also need values like patient care, uh, creativity, et cetera, et cetera. So it's a, it's a two-way street between the leaders and the employees. And that's why doing a values assessment is interesting because it allows you to bring forth what is it that an employee is really, who they are and what they want to see in the desired culture of the organization. So that ha that's the level of the value. So it's, a, it's, a, it's an iteration process between the, le the leadership and the employees. Uh, but then you get to the behaviors. That's, that's, within the, that's the employees decide that within their department. So the people in the uh, oncology department will get together and we'll, we'll say, okay, these are the values. How do we practice those values in this department? And they write them down. How do we behave? And so, and then, and that becomes part of employee appraisal, if you want to go that way. So, so everybody in the oncology is is uh, referenced against the values, but actually, what they're referencing in are the behaviors that are important in that department. Okay. So you were mentioning the fact of you know doing like a culture assessment, and it happened to me sometimes that you know. Um, I was asked to do a culture assessment in an organization. Then the, the leadership was seeing the results, often surprising. And actually, one of the things that often you realize is that actually your exposed values are not really present in the top values right. of culture. Yeah. And uh, and there, what what you should start doing is you know starting to have dialogues within the organizations. Right. Um, said that. Uh, it happens that, you know, the, the leaders, they like the results and they say, okay, what, what should we do about that? And they're not so keen in going into dialogue and uh, yes, they can do the first step, but in the end, they want to keep control. So how to get away of that? 